Shalom, I'm Messianic Rabbi Zef Porat, and welcome to a special outreach update from Jerusalem, Israel. We're living in exciting and prophetic times. There's never been a generation closer to the second coming of Jesus Yeshua, God, than this generation. We're not setting any dates, but we know that the time is near. We know that the veil is being lifted. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16, and Jews in Israel are being saved like never before. There is a revival in Israel. There is a hunger in Israel. We're living in a time of the prophet that prophesied Amos, Amos chapter 8, verse 11. The days are coming, declares the sovereign Lord, when I will send a famine through the land, not a famine of food or thirst for water, but a famine of hearing the words of the Lord. We're in those times now. And as we get closer to the second coming of Jesus Yeshua, without setting any dates, we're going to see more of that hunger in Israel and around the world. In the Kotel area, the Western Wall, Jerusalem, there are also bar mitzvah celebrations over there. Although the actual celebration of a bar mitzvah is not biblical, it's not in the Bible, the concept of a boy turning to age 13 and being responsible on his own sins is. Luke chapter 2, verse 42 to 43. When he was 12 years old, that's referring to Yeshua, Jesus, they went up to the festival according to the custom. That's the feast of Passover, Pesach. After the festival, the feast was over. While his parents were returning home, the boy, Jesus, Yeshua, stayed behind in Jerusalem, but they were unaware of it. So the question is, what was Yeshua, Jesus, doing in the temple at age 12? And why did the Pharisees allow him to teach and to speak? Because he wasn't the only one that was there at age 12. That is the age of the preparation for the bar mitzvah, for being led into responsibility. And so from age 12, they would begin to study, they would begin to be prepared for manhood. At age 13, they would be responsible on their own sins. This is also recorded in Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 16, where it says, three times a year, all your males shall appear before the Lord God in the place where he chooses at the Feast of Unleavened Bread, that, that's where Yeshua was, at the Feast of Weeks, Shavuot, and at the Feast of Tabernacles, and they shall not appear before the Lord empty-handed. And so we see that Yeshua is in the temple at age 12. He's commanded to be there. He's supposed to be over there because he's already at age 12. He's already at the age of the males going into the temple. That's why they didn't uh, refuse him for teaching in the temple. And they were astonished by him because he's God. But this explains why he was 12 years old. But once again, the word bar mitzvah or the celebration of bar mitzvah is not in the Bible. That was invented by the rabbis. But it was taken from a little bit of truth because in every lie there's a little bit of truth. And a lot of it has to do with the fact that they've been blinded. And because they don't believe in Yeshua, they look for these ceremonies to replace what the Bible says. But the Bible is clear that age 12 is the age of accountability. Age 13 is where a boy is totally responsible on his own sins. And this brings us to the book of Psalms chapter 2. We're going to get into the outreach. I just have to give some kind of background and context here. Don't you know that I'll be doing my father's business, and I'm paraphrasing what Yeshua said at age 12, and they did know that age 12 is the time that the males go into the temple preparing for manhood. Psalms 2 is a very powerful messianic prophecy. It talks about Yeshua, it talks about God and his anointing, which is Yeshua. You are my son, today I have begotten you, which shows the deity of Yeshua. But in Psalms chapter 2, verse 12, it says, Kiss the son, lest he be angry, and you perish in the way, for his wrath is quickly kindled. Blessed are all who take refuge in him. But in Hebrew, when it says, kiss the son, it says, nashku bar pen yenaf. And so the reason in Psalms 2, the word bar is the only word used in Aramaic. And that word happens to be son because it's showing what, what, what is Psalms 2 speaking about? It's speaking about blessed are those who take refuge in the son. How do you take refuge in the son? You believe that he is Yeshua that he, he's the Messiah, that he's God, that he died on the tree and the cross for our sins. He rose on the third day, and by his blood, if you repent and believe, you have full redemption of sins. Why? Because he bore all our transgressions. He took all our sicknesses, all our diseases, all our sins were taken on him. He is the Baal. He is the Son. And so that Son, the process of him being the Messiah, began at age 12 when he's going in the temple. He's going into manhood. And later on, he can go to the cross in his fullness, die on the cross for our sins, and through him we become righteous. And so that is the foreshadow why in Psalms 2 it uses the word bar instead of the word ben. A lot of times we like to ask uh, the rabbis who don't believe in Yeshua here in Israel, 
why do you use the word bar mitzvah instead of using the word ben mitzvah? And they don't have an answer. So we were led by the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh, to go down to the Kotel area and preach the gospel in the time of the bar mitzvah celebrations and ask the bar mitzvah rabbis, what is the word bar and why do you use the word bar mitzvah instead of ben mitzvah? As the Messiah of Israel Ministries team were praying, by the guidance of the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh, we went down to the Kotel area to preach the gospel to the Bar Mitzvah rabbi. It was hours before the Bar Mitzvah celebration began, and I had time to approach him. I introduced myself and asked him, are you the Bar Mitzvah rabbi? He said, yes. I am Harav Yosef Vingate. I am Rabbi Joseph Vingate. He asked me, are you one of the people that are invited to the Bar Mitzvah? I said, no, but I have a few questions. The rabbi answered, Kuli Ozen, I'm all ears. I asked Rabbi Yosef, Rabbi Joseph, what is the concept of Bar Mitzvah? The rabbi said, a boy turns to be a man. I then asked the rabbi, and what about the sins? He said, what do you mean? I said, who's responsible on the sins? He said, from age 13, the boy, no longer his parents. I asked the rabbi, can the parents be responsible for the boy's sins? At any age, can you be responsible for your sins? What takes away sin? The rabbi was puzzled by my question. He then looked at me and said, we try to do good deeds. I asked, can you show me in the Bible where it says that good deeds takes away sins? He said, it's not in the Bible. It's in the rabbinic books. I then asked Rabbi Yosef, who has the authority? The rabbis or God? He looked at me and said, God. I said, so why do you go to rabbinic books? I then asked Rabbi Yosef, what takes away sins according to the Bible? He looked at me and said, according to the Bible, we had sacrifices. I said, do we have sacrifices now? He said, no. I said, then what takes away sins? He then looked at me and said, what does this have to do with the bar mitzvah? I said, everything. He said, what do you mean? I said, well, you're a bar mitzvah rabbi. You teach students the Bible when they enter into manhood. Surely you should know that God requires sacrifice for sins. Surely you should know that God's word never changes. If God said something in the beginning, it's going to be there to the end, and it will not change. If God said, I require sacrifice for sins, then he requires sacrifice for sins, and it doesn't change. And it doesn't matter what the rabbinic books say. It matters only what the word of God says in context. Praise Yeshua. The rabbi was getting intrigued. He forgot that he was preparing for the bar mitzvah and wanted to hear more. The Holy Spirit was working on him. The prayers of the believers were working. I then asked him, why do you use the word bar mitzvah instead of the word ben mitzvah? The word bar is in Aramaic. Why is it in Aramaic? He looked at me and he said, I never thought about that. I said, but you're the bar mitzvah rabbi. In Hebrew, the word for son is the word ben. Yet here we see the word bar. I then told Rabbi Yosef, and this ties in with sacrifices. He said, where does it say that? I turned the Bible to Psalms chapter 2 and began to read with the rabbi. But before we read, I asked the rabbi another question. I asked Rabbi Yosef, would God ever ask us to worship someone else except for him? He said, no. I said, are you sure? He said, 100%. I said, would God tell us to worship King David? He said, no. Would God tell us to worship Moses? He said, no. I said, if the Bible says to worship someone, who is it? He said, if God wrote it, it's, it must be only God. I then told Rabbi Yosef, with that understanding, Let's read Psalms 2. Finally, we reach Psalms 2, 7. I will proclaim the Lord's decree, he said to me. You are my son. Today I have become your father. Ask of me, and I will make the nations your inheritance, the ends of the earth your possession. You will break them with a rod of iron. You will dash them to pieces like pottery. Therefore, you kings, be wise, be warned, you rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the son, lest he be angry, and you perish in the way, for his wrath is quickly kindled. Blessed are all who take refuge in him. I told Rabbi Yosef, the only one we can take refuge in is God. We both agreed that God would never let you worship anybody else except for him. And it says over here, kiss the son, which is a form of worship. The son is God. And the word for son there is Baal, the same word you use for Bar Mitzvah, showing that a boy at age 13 takes the responsibility on him. This The Messiah here in Psalms 2 is taking all the sins on him. 
And that's why it uses in Psalms 2, Bav, because it's showing that he's taking all the sins on him, all the responsibility on him. And that's why the word is used in Baal Mitzvah. And most people don't even know that because they don't tie it in with the Messiah, Mashiach. And no boy or no parents can take away sins. The only one that can take away the sin is God. Nashku Baal Penya Enaf, kiss the son, lest he be angry and you perish. The rabbi was now trembling. The Holy Spirit was working on him. He then asked, who is this Messiah? It was time for the full gospel. After reading Psalms 2 again, we went to Psalms 22, Isaiah 53, Micah 5.2, and many Bible passages. And finally, he asked again, but who is the Messiah? What is his name? He is the Nashkuba. He is the kiss the son, Yeshua, Jesus, who died on the tree on the cross for your sins. He rose on the third day. And by his blood, if you repent and believe, you have full redemption of sins and eternal life. And that is the true meaning of the word Baal, son. Nashku Baal, penya enough. Kiss the son, lest he be angry and you perish. Which means worship him as king of kings and lord of lords. Yes, age 12 is the age that we start to study for the Bar Mitzvah. Age 13, a boy is responsible for his own actions. But the only one who can take away the sins is the Messiah, Mashiach, God. Rabbi Yosef looked at me and said, I have to prepare for this Baal Mitzvah. The guests will be here in the next two hours. The boy is not ready yet. I then told Rabbi Yosef, the boy will not be ready until he embraces Yeshua as his personal savior. Rabbi Yosef then said, I have a Baal Mitzvah coming up and so do others here. I could have you thrown out. I then looked at Rabbi Yosef and said, you could have me thrown out but you won't do it. And he said, why is that? I said, because you've read the truth and you know that the truth can only do one thing and that is set you free. I quoted Psalms 119 verse 35 to him. Make me walk in your path of your commandments for I delight in it. In Hebrew, it says, make me walk free in your path. The truth can only do one thing and that is set you free. I gave Rabbi Yosef Vingate my contact information. One thing is certain, Rabbi Yosef Vingate and all those that heard the gospel will never be the same again. And for this, we give all the glory to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, Jesus Yeshua. We pray for Rabbi Vingate that he will have visitations. He will have dreams and he will know that Yeshua, Jesus, is the Messiah. Yeshua is God. And for Zion's sake, we will not keep silent. Isaiah 62 verse 1. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not remain quiet. Till her vindication shines out like the dawn her salvation like a blazing torch. And we know that the word for salvation in Hebrew is the word Yeshua, her Yeshua, like a blazing torch. And he's coming back with fire in his eyes, that blazing torch, as the lion of the tribe of Judah, Al Yehuda, to take back everything that the enemy has stolen. And until that time, we will continue to preach the gospel no matter what. Until next time, I'm Messianic Rabbi Zeph Porat sending you blessings from Israel in the mighty name of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, Al Yehuda, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Great I Am, Jesus Yeshua, Amen. Every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that Yeshua, Jesus, is God. Hallelujah, Amen. Nashku bal pen yenaf, ashrei kol hachosebo. Here's the son, lest he be angry and you perish in the way. For his wrath is quickly kindled. Blessed are all who take refuge in him. Hallelujah. Straight from the land of Israel and right out of the heart of Messianic Rabbi Zev Parat comes Zev's brand new book, Unmasking the Chaldean Spirit. The subtitle reads, A Messianic Rabbi's Stunning Supernatural Journey to Zion and the Life-Changing Treasures He Uncovered Along the Way. It's being described by readers as explosive, deeply moving, an unbelievable journey, a world of perspective and insight. Dr. Tom Horn, CEO of Skywatch TV and an acclaimed best-selling author says, Zev truly pulls back the mask on the predominant spiritual battle of the last days, and he does it by metaphorically taking you by the hand and placing you right in the middle of the Holy Land. His work is scholarly, thought-provoking, and tantalizing. My name is Carl Gallops. I was blessed to write the foreword to Zev's book. I've read every single page of it, and I assure you it's riveting and eye-opening. Let me warn you, though, don't pick it up thinking you'll read just a handful of pages, then put it down. 
that'll probably be next to impossible for you to do. Unmasking the Chaldean Spirit, available at fine bookstores everywhere and at the major online bookstores as well. Get your copy now.